this is an early 2000s netbook originally sold at CVS Pharmacy. It's extremely underpowered, has almost no memory, and could barely run the Windows CE it came with. And when we find garbage around here, we install Linux on it. So stay tuned. And if you enjoy trying to shoehorn modern Linux onto the questionable computers of yesteryear, I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. In our last video on this thing, we explored it for what it is. With its 128 megs of RAM and 300 megahertz ARM CPU, it was garbage then and it's garbage today. If you haven't seen that video, check it out right here. But today, by popular demand, we're gonna right some of the wrongs on this thing by installing modern Linux. I was actually pretty surprised to see how easy it is to get modern Debian going on this thing. Apparently, this will just boot right up off of an SD card inserted into the upside down card reader on the side. And I found two separate GitHub repos with builds of Debian and bootloaders that supposedly just work. And boy, does that sound like a grand old time, so let's dig up an SD card. All right, I have a 16 gigabyte SD card. Now we should scrounge up a computer already running Linux so we can set this SD card up nice and easy. Ah, ThinkPad X60S running OpenSUSE. Don't mind if I do. SD card reader right on the side here, nice and convenient. Here is the GitHub repository for book config which has the latest release, August 10th, 2023. So we will download the boot partition files and the rootfs files. Now we just need to set up the SD card in gparted. Two new partitions. First one will be 16 megs and it will be FAT16, that's the boot partition. And the rest of the card will be EXT4. And now we'll mount the partitions from the SD card to these directories here. And now we will extract the file systems we just downloaded. And with that, this SD card should actually be bootable in the garbage Sylvania. So let's pop it in there, turn it on, and uh, see what happens. Right after this quick word about today's sponsor, Delete Me. Okay, I bet when you filled out your personal information on this thing in the early 2000s, it wound up in the hands of data brokers who probably are still selling it on today. That kind of thing actually happened to me back in the day and my childhood home address was haunting my name online in search engines for years. But this is exactly the kind of thing that today's sponsor Delete Me can help to address. Delete Me not only found all of this information floating out there, but showed me a ton of brokers and websites that have it and helped me delete it. I wonder if that's where they got the name delete me from. But seriously, it's harder than ever to keep your private info private. With all of the dangers out there like phishing, scams, identity theft, it's more important than ever to protect your private information. Get 20% off your Delete Me US consumer plan when you go to joindeleteme.com slash actionretro and use promo code actionretro at checkout. That's joindeleteme.com slash actionretro code action retro in goes the SD card and I'll plug this into wired ethernet for now even though as we discovered <laughs> this has Wi-Fi via a decased Wi-Fi USB dongle hardwired and overheating in the corner here let's turn this thing on and see if it boots up Debian Oh my God, it's really dim, but it's loading Linux. <laughs> All right, well, it's been doing stuff for about 20 minutes. It looks like it's running apt update. Uh, I didn't ask it to, but it's doing it anyway. Uh, it's taking forever, so I'm just gonna let this thing go and hopefully it sorts itself out. Hey, look, it had me create a new account and shortly after it figured itself out. 
<laughs> oh my goodness. Here we are, the login. Uh, <laughs> username Sean and a very secure password. My friends, we are in Debian 12. Right, apparently we don't even have ping. Let's see. Pseudo apt update. Believe we have some configuration issues here. My goodness, is this thing slow? <laughs> we are slowly running apt update. And uh, yeah, there's almost nothing installed on here. There's no ping. I don't think there's like nano. Neofetch isn't on here. So uh, we're gonna have to install stuff and that seems like it's going to take quite a long time. All right, well, wouldn't you know, I posted about my shenanigans here on social media, and turns out I'm not the only person who is fighting with Linux on one of these things. In fact, somebody messaged me and offered me her fully updated rootfs file system, where she has not only fully updated it, but installed a whole bunch of software, which, well, she said took her hours. Oh yeah, look at that. NeoFetch is installed and shows us running Debian 12 Bookworm on this Wonder Media WM8505 netbook with 118 megs of RAM. All right, looks like we are connected to the internet. So what I'd like to do is just install a bunch of stuff and then see if we can have some kind of actual desktop Linux experience on this thing. All right, what we're looking at right now is LightDM giving us a login screen. And on top of that, I've installed three different desktop environments that we can switch to. And we'll look at them in order of how likely they are to give us any sort of usable experience. So XFCE is kind of a very full feature desktop environment which I can't imagine is gonna run well, if at all, on this 300 megahertz arm. I've also installed IceWM, which is what I'm leaning towards because that's a very full featured window manager, but is extremely lightweight. I've also installed JWM, which is Joe's window manager, which is even more lightweight. And uh, if none of the other environments give us anything, I'm sure that Joe's window manager will work. Oh my God. <laughs> I honestly did not expect this to work, but here we are. We are in full XFCE on the garbage Sylvania. I can't, I can't believe it's working. I mean, <laughs> there's quite a bit of mouse lag here. Uh, let's open a terminal and see what that's like. Oh yeah, that is quite slow but it, <laughs> it is shockingly working. Yeah, running XFCE 4.18. I mean, it's not unusable, it's unbearable, but it's alive. Oh boy, it can barely run HTOP and move the mouse without pegging this CPU at 100%. <laughs> All right, well, I've installed a few different web browsers to try out. Dillo, which is super lightweight, and NetSurf, which is still lightweight, but a little bit more complicated than Dillo. All right, we are browsing the internet. Look at this. Let's start out with frogfind.com, which I bet will work okay. Yeah. Look at that, browsing the internet. All right, we also have NetSurf, which I'm sure will perform just a bit worse on here. Wow, I feel like NetSurf is actually running better on here than Dillo. Yeah, this is shockingly good. I cannot believe it. We, we're getting so much more use out of this ridiculous little machine than we ever could have, even when it was new with Windows CE. Well, after that resounding success with XFCE, let's see if we can get an even better usable experience 
by going to the lightweight Ice WM. All right, well, that's surprising. Ice WM does not want to work at all. Oh, look at this. JWM started up immediately, and it is super fast. I mean, that's the whole point of it. It's extremely lightweight. And compared to XFCE, this is super fast. Yeah, we are barely into our swap space. This is showing we're running in 36 megs right now. <laughs> Pretty nice. All right, let's do something a little crazy. I'm gonna make sure get is installed. This might be a really dumb idea, but let's try compiling some software. I'm going to clone the Classic Cube GitHub repository and try to compile it and see if we can actually do some gaming on this thing. All right, <laughs> let's try to compile it. I'm sure this will take quite a while if it even works. Holy crap, it compiled. I cannot believe it. This thing didn't even melt. I guess let's try to run it. Yeah, look, Classic Cube executable right there. Oh boy, here we go. Gaming on the Sylvania Linux garbage netbook. Oh, oh my God, I can't believe it. Oh, it's trying. It's like missing fonts or something. Holy smokes. <laughs> It actually loaded into Classic Cube. I haven't tried moving yet, but it says we're currently getting 0 0.2 FPS. Oh, it's still loading, actually. <laughs> All right, I pushed W. Yeah, not looking good for a playable experience. Maybe full screen will help. I'll push F11. All right, after several minutes, it has figured out full screen. We're still getting 0 0.2 FPS, which is hilarious. Let's see if we can uh, yeah, play the game a little bit. Got my mouse here. Uh, I moved it quite a lot so far and nothing has happened on screen. I dare say this is not quite playable. But still, it's amazing that I was able to compile this software and run it under Linux on this ridiculous little machine. Well, that was quite a lot of effort for quite a lot of um, slow. And what have we learned here today? Nothing. Except maybe that Debian really does run on anything, although I think we all already knew that. But you know what? I think I'm going to do something special with this machine. Originally, I thought I was going to drop it on the free pile at VCF East Swap Meet, which is coming up in a few weeks. But I think I'm gonna try and show this machine the respect that it never had and never deserved by bringing it with me to VCF Southwest and displaying it right alongside my Toshiba libretto running Apple Rhapsody and some other machines running improbable operating systems. Because despite this thing's many, many, many flaws, I still do really quite like it. In any event, if you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more stuff like this, please subscribe down below. And thank you very much for watching. And a special thanks to Alex Hoffman, Andrew Nicholson, April White, Chris Biggs, Chris Calderon, Chris Nelson, Control Alt Reese, Drew Hamlin, Frodo Jedi, Gaspar Heller, George Rosansky, Graham, Greg from Hrut K Mods, James Fryman, James Laurie, Jason Papaz, Jason Ezel, Camille Rakowski, Lyle Truid, Matthew Crowall, Nick Daniels, Paul Spencer, Ryan, Scott Cedarbaum, Scott Thompson, Tom Woodfin, Unknown Soldier 41, Veronica Explains, and Xantronics and Industrial, who are my highest tiered patrons and all of my Patreon supporters for helping to make these videos possible.